I'm Catherine Denby, Associate Professor at the University of Warwick, joint appointment between the Life Sciences Department and also Warwick Systems Biology Centre. Can you describe to us the area of plant science you work in and explain some of the work that you're currently doing in the lab? Okay, so um, I work on how plants respond uh, and adapt to changes in, in their environment, particularly how they respond uh, to infection by pathogens, so diseases, uh, a range of, of pathogens. But most of our work has been done with a, with a uh, economically important fungus, Botrytis cinerea. So what we're trying to do is work out how do plants sense they've been infected and how do they uh, initiate appropriate responses. So a pathogen might land on one leaf, how does a plant uh, get the other cells in that leaf to defend against infection and warn the rest of the plant about what's going on and, and make an appropriate response. And what's really exciting about what we've been doing is that because now we can just get so much data, so when I look at gene expression, which is the sort of level that we're looking at, these gene regulatory networks, how do uh, cells change gene expression for defence? So when we, when we look at gene expression, instead of looking at expression of a single gene, we can now look at expression of every single gene in the genome. So we've got very large data sets. So what we, I've been doing, particularly with this joint appointment in the Warwick Systems Biology Centre, is collaborating with mathematicians to take mathematical approaches to interpret our data. Because it's gone beyond the stage of a biologist being able to look at uh, something and say, oh yeah, that's linked to to that. Um, so we, we make predictive models and then come up with new hypotheses from the mathematics that we then test in the lab. How, how does this sort of research relate to everyday life in your view? I think the key thing is in terms of improving plant productivity in a sustainable manner. So obviously there's huge yield losses through pathogen infection of plants um, and yes it's possible to spray with, with chemicals but legislation is meaning there's less chemicals available um, for use and also that's a very um, costly approach so in terms of sort of developing country economies it's just simply not possible at the level of subsistence farming. So what we're trying to do is find novel ways of, of breeding or genetically engineering um, new varieties of crops um, to make them more inherently resistant to, to pathogens. So most of my work has been done on Arabidopsis just because it's a very good model system, um, but we're now starting to work on, on real crops. Um, so for example, we're involved in a project on cassava, with cassava brown streak virus, with, with collaborators in Nairobi. So that's something where you can hopefully make a real Im impact. Excellent. You mentioned Arabidopsis there, so um, you know, given that new technologies are lowering barriers to studying agriculturally and commercially important crops, what role do you think, if any, if Arabidopsis has in the future really? I think it will still have a role, it's just so much quicker to do things with Arabidopsis. I mean, yeah, take our or cassava or sorghum project we're developing. Cassava takes 12 months to grow. So we've got to, we can design an experiment, but we can do one a year. With Arabidopsis, we can do a lot more hypothesis testing, experiments to validate networks that we're producing. And maybe do several you know, Arabidopsis experiments and then take the results from that and test those in, in your one crop experiment. Um, so I think it's still going to have a, a role just from cost and, uh, I mean, you know, it's much easier to grow Arabidopsis in a growth chamber than to find a field to unnecessary environment conditions to grow many of the crops. Okay, excellent. What, what do you think the major challenges are for plant sciences in the next sort of 10 years? I think the major challenges is to have an impact. There's a lot of good plant science research going on but trying to translate that into real um, benefits and, and, and products for society. I think the other uh, major challenge is to re recruit new up-and-coming researchers. I mean, we see it time and time again that at the undergraduate level it's all everyone wants to do biomedical science um, and you get a few people who are really keen on plant science but I think that's the major challenge as well is to get to it that plants are not seen as boring. Plants are seen as a very crucial part of our ecosystem. How, how do you think climate change will affect the type and occurrence of pathogens that affect UK crops? Yeah, so I mean I think um, there's already some sort of evidence that with say warmer winters or, or less, uh, that, sort of, that sort of change, that some pathogens will be able to overwinter where they, they couldn't before. Um, and pathogens, so ge pathogens, geographical areas may, may spread. Um, similarly, the other way, you know, pathogens from the UK may go to, to warmer climates where they couldn't exist before. So I think there is a, um, yeah, there is a, a risk of, of getting new, new pathogens, but I think the more important uh, aspect is really to make 
pathogen control more sustainable and cheaper. Um, how will the systems biology approaches that you've utilised in your work help you translate your research from Arabidopsis to agriculturally important crops? Yeah, I think they'll be um, crucial. I mean, the real power of the systems approach is to take huge numbers of data and find the, the key hypotheses or the key, the key genes in a process. And that's what we've done in Arabidopsis. With many crops, the genomes are even bigger many times bigger, so you've got much more um, sifting to do. So I think the systems approaches are going to be even more crucial there in terms of finding key genes. Um, and also, uh, the whole point about systems is that you can make, you're not looking at one or two genes. You know, it's, we've been able to um, manipulate one or two genes for a very long time, but then they have unintended consequences. So what the systems predictive approach, sort of having a predictive network does, is try to predict those unintended consequences so that you can make informed choices about which genes to uh, manipulate. And also, crucially, make combinations of genes. Um, so, and I think that's going to be very important for uh, having something that's going to be durable resistance in, in the field. And finally, how do you think the plant science community in the UK should structure itself to meet the challenges some of which you've outlined already. I think the crucial thing is that it acts as one community and that it um, is uh, supportive of itself. It doesn't try to sort of um, promote one area over another, but can sort of promote all of plant science. And as I say, linking back to sort of just getting people interested in plant science, I think it's crucial to go to schools, public media, and try and make people aware that, that plants are, are very important and, and exciting to work on. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're That's welcome. It.